Hello and welcome to Ritz Scale Model Fix and today it's kit review time. So we've got the brand new Mill 24 Hind from Zvezda in 48 scale and as you can see from the rather nice uh, digital box out there it looks quite tempting. So without further ado let's have a quick look around the box and see what we've got. So on the box sides we've just got a blurb and some paint and colour call outs uh, regards the decal sheets and the marking options. And on the other side of the box, we've got some other products available from Vesta in uh, forms of some Russian aircraft. Once we turn the box round and have a look on the rear side, we have the contents and some detailed photos, uh, information wise, picture of the completed build and a blurb of the finished model. Lifting the lid, the contents of the box are somewhat smaller than the box itself and contained in two plastic bags with a decal sheet and a colour call outs for the markings these are well printed and the decals look to be nice and their uh, four color options are included we have an instruction booklet look to be photocopied and a clear and concise as we'll see in a second so we've made we've opened the box now and there's Vesta hind and we've got the instruction booklet to take a look at as you can see the first impressions are that it's just a photocopied uh, version just at the top we've got copy of the box art we've got some multilingual uh, information regarding the type again some more multilingual uh, hobby tips and at the bottom we've got version one and version two version one looks to have all the access doors and crew doors cockpit doors engine cowlings open where version two is a buttoned up version turning the page we've got the uh, parts map so we can see the sprues there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sprues, including the uh, single clear one. Into uh, assembly, and construction starts with uh, assembly of the pilot figures and the cockpit tub. Uh, decals look to be used for the instrumentation, so uh, we see, interesting to see if there is any raised, uh, raised details on the plastic parts. But representation of the rear bulkheads and everything looks pretty good. Uh, bottom of the page concludes with the assembly starting on uh, the rotor head and gearbox. Turning the page, we have some more work focusing on the internals. With the engine bay, which then makes up the roof of the cargo load area. And the uh, cockpit's already bolted on. Just down the margins there, we've got some of the assemblies that need to be pre-assembled before they appear in the main diagram. So anybody who's not familiar with Vesta instructions, it always points out on the left what you need to assemble for the main uh, assembly sequences in the uh, numbered sections. So full en two full engines looking as though they're uh, given there with the going into the engine bay and some pipework and plumbing and engine mounts. Top of the next page, we're looking at adding the crew doors and some drop-in panels, so hopefully they'll be a good fit. Uh, some more structural internal detail there being added, some parts, uh, some holes being opened depending on the uh, version you're making. Completion of the internals again, so version 1, version 2. Uh, crew door closed, engine access bay closed. Progressing through the instructions and we've got the fuselage halves now trapping the finished internal section in between with a front lower nose section which is pre-assembled prior to addition to the model. We've got a strange layout for the nose section with left and right halves being sandwiched onto the main fuselage encompassing the now completed cockpit tub and the main instrument panels there again with decals for the, uh, for the instruments. Turning the page, moving over to the opposite side, and we've got the addition of the nose gun gondola and undercarriage doors, which are in the closed position. You've got the stub wing pylons and the pylons for the actual mounting of the weapons. Canopy glass going on. And then the focus of attention now is uh, on all the extra little panels and doors. So we've got the engine net intakes and guards. Um, just making out the notes for which version you're doing 
cowlings all being closed up and the undercarriage going on once we flip the model over. Next page deals with weapons, so we've got uh, gun pods and rocket pods there. A few other lumps and bumps going on at the bottom of the page before we deal with the addition of all the open doors and the different type of intakes. Final stage of the build is dealing with the rotor hub assembly and rotor blades before the back page is taken up with stencil location diagrams. So all in all it looks to be quite a straightforward build if not a little bit complicated in terms of the fit in some areas but the proof of the pudding as they say is in the eating so we'll see what it's like when we get it on the bench. So taking a look at the markings there's some different options uh, included in the kit should cater for most tastes so we've got some nice camel camouflaged examples there uh, decal option one which is soviet forces and bagram air base in 1988 so the typical afghan war machine turn over the page for the other uh, options and we've got a checker force one in a tricolor camo which is uh, looking quite nice we've got a uh, Defence of the Russian Navy Baltic Fleet Airfield 2015 in dark grey, I think. And another Navy one in the uh, traditional sand and green camo again for the uh, Defence of the Navy Baltic Fleet in 2019. So, attractive markings. The decals themselves, if anybody's ever used Zvezda ones, tend to be really good if they're not a little bit thin. So. I've used them on a couple of builds and uh, these look no exception, they look to be well produced, perfect register and will work a dream no doubt. So let's take a look at the plastic. So we've just opened the bag containing the, the uh, fuselage, sprue A, and the first thing that's uh, quite evident is the size of the helicopter so that's an a3 cutting map so it is uh, quite a big one so you're looking at 30 centimeters minus the nose and the first thing that's really striking and evident is there's no surface detail so the plastic is totally smooth there's no raised rivets details or anything however the panel lines are engraved and very very finely rendered it's just a shame that with it being a helicopter, helicopters predominantly covered in rivets, that there, there isn't any, and it does stand out. There is no raised detail. They've just got some round there for the hinges, and the panel lines actually are very, very thin and very, very finely rendered, but there's no rivet detail around any of the hatches, any of the latches, anything like that. And I think that's just going to detract from the finished model at the, at in the final stages of the build when it's painted so that is quite strange it is very strange there's quite a little bit of a rough texture as well to the uh, to the mold but other than that it is perfectly produced there's no flash the tail slightly warped or is it meant to be like that it's got a kink there obviously to offset the uh, rotors maybe but yeah no, that's the fuselage, it is quite basic unfortunately. So moving on to the rest of the kit. So this is sprue G and contains some of the engine details and rotor hub. This is nicely produced, it's got some nice level of detail there. Again very fine, no ejector pin marks that you can see on any of the Places they're all on the blind side, so you've got the uh, exhaust intake e exits there and uh, gearbox engines and what have you. So the next sprue we have, so the next sprue we have is sprue D. So as you can see, you've got that front nose section in the gondola. Again. The lack of surface detail is, is evident. The cockpit tub is featureless, so you're going to need the uh, the decals or an Edouard etch. So I think personally I'm going to wait for the Edouard etch to come out for this. 
uh, pick up a zoom set or whatever the cockpit uh, details need. I think for the scale, unfortunately, the kit is lacking the finesse that it needs. So this, moving on to the next sprue, and this is sprue, when I can find it, B. So we've got some of the internal bulkheads and floors. So some detail represented on the cockpit, on the cargo bay door. We've got the wheels and some nice quilting effect there on the, uh, the cargo bay roof. On the other side, you've got the uh, engine panels and some nice detail there on the inside of the access doors. Eject pin marks are all on the blind side. No uh, mould imperfections or anything noted. Okay, so let's have a look at the remaining sprues. So sprue E, we've got pilot figures. This concentrates with the rotor blades and all the underwing pylons. Again, nicely uh, moulded. No mould perfections, but devoid of any surface detail other than engraved panel lines. Last but not least is the weapon spray. Follows the same uh, sort of format of the rest of the kits. Nicely produced, well moulded, no uh, ejector pin marks, etc. To worry about. I'm not going to remove these from the bag, but hasten to say they're clear, just about. Quite thickly moulded, as some of them have come off the parts. So there we have the Zvezda's 48 scale pine. MI24 and unfortunately it's a bit disappointing for me I expected uh, for the price of the kit 40 UK pounds to expect it a little bit more um, the cockpit detail is sadly lacking there's no raised uh, renditions of the instruments at all the fuselage is smooth it's just got recessed panel lines I'm sure the real thing would be covered in rivets and uh, so there we have it. The options out there, obviously the old monogram kit, and I think Trumpeter did one uh, a while back. So it'll be interesting to see how it builds up and compares with those. But it is a new tool kit, so hopefully the fit will be uh, up to today's standards. I know the rest of the Zvezda kits that I've uh, had the pleasure of building today have been really nice builds and really look uh, quite good when done. So hopefully the build will uh, offset the, the lack of detail. One's got to say, obviously the uh, Zvezda do a 70 second scale version of this kit and I'm just wondering whether it is a lazy attempt at upscaling without incorporating the extra detail required for the larger scale. So there we go, it's a bit of a mixed review this one. So thanks for following, thanks for uh, watching, hopefully you found this video useful. So please subscribe and keep up to date with the channel. Until next time please, take care.